Did you know that about 78% of American workers live paycheck to paycheck? That's right, even those earning six figures. And here's another one. Only 30% of Americans have a long-term financial plan. Crazy, right? But here's the good news. Becoming a millionaire isn't just for the lucky few. It's about smart choices, not just big paychecks. In this series, we're going to explore six powerful steps that can lead you to financial freedom. Think of it as a treasure map with X marking the spot of your financial dreams. From learning how to create multiple income streams to mastering the art of saving and investing, we're covering it all. We'll dive into why it's crucial to continuously educate yourself about finances, how to maximize your retirement contributions, and the best ways to dodge high interest debt. And of course, we'll talk about building that all-important emergency fund. Each chapter is packed with easy-to-follow strategies, real-life stories, and surprising facts that will make you think, why didn't I start sooner? So buckle up and get ready for a journey to a more secure financial future. Because the truth is, the path to becoming a millionaire is right at your fingertips. Let's discover it together. Chapter 1. Diversify your earnings. More than one way to earn. Let's talk about making money, but not the usual way. Did you know most millionaires have seven income streams? That's right, not just one or two, but seven. This chapter is all about not relying on just your day job. Think about it. What if that job goes away? Let's start with side hustles. You've heard of Uber, right? Driving a few hours after work can add a nice chunk to your wallet. Or how about using your skills? If you're good at graphic design, websites like Fiverr are gold mines. Just remember it's about using what you're good at. Next, rental income. Imagine earning money while you sleep if you have a spare room. Platforms like Airbnb can turn that space into cash. It's not just for big investors. Regular folks are doing it too. Freelancing is another great way. Did you know that by 2027, half of the workers in the US will be freelancers? It's flexible and can be quite lucrative. Plus, you get to be your own boss. And don't forget about investments. Stocks, bonds, mutual funds, these can be great sources of passive income. But remember, it's important to do your research or talk to a financial advisor. Warren Buffett said, never depend on a single income. Make investment to create a second source. He's one of the richest people in the world, so he must be onto something. Chapter 2. Start saving young. The magic of early savings. Moving on to saving money. It's not just about putting away a few bucks here and there. It's about starting early. Why? Compound interest, that's the magic word. Albert Einstein called compound interest the eighth wonder of the world. He said, he who understands it earns it. He who doesn't pays it. Here's a cool fact. If you start saving $100 a month at age 20, by the time you're 60, you could have over $170,000. But if you start at 30, that number drops to around $75,000. Big difference, right? It's all about making your money work for you. You don't need a lot to start. Even small amounts add up over time. The key is consistency. Make it a habit like brushing your teeth. You might be thinking, but I don't have extra money to save. Well, it's about priorities. Skipping that daily fancy coffee can save you around $1,000 a year. See, it's the little things. And here's a strategy. Automate your savings. Set up your bank account so a little bit of your paycheck goes directly into a savings account. Out of sight, out of mind, but growing all the time. Save a portion of your earnings and don't touch it. That's advice from the book, The Richest Man in Babylon, a classic on personal finance. Simple yet powerful. Chapter 3. Keep learning your financial education. All right, we're on to something big now. Staying smart with your money. It's like this quote from Benjamin Franklin. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest, and that's what we're doing here. Investing in our financial knowledge. So where to start? First up, budgeting. It's not a scary word, promise. A budget is just a plan for your money. It's like having a map when you're on a road trip. Without it, you might get lost. With it, you reach your destination. Financial freedom. Now let's talk about the stock market. Did you know that over the long term, the S&P 500 has returned about 10% annually? That's way better than keeping your cash under the mattress. But here's the thing. It's not about quick wins. It's about being patient and consistent. Understanding taxes is key too. They can take a big bite out of your earnings if you're not careful. Learning about tax deductions and credits can save you a lot of money. It's like finding hidden treasure in your own backyard. Insurance is another important area. Life Health Auto. These aren't just monthly bills. They're safety nets. Imagine if something bad happens and you're not covered. Scary, right? That's why understanding what you're paying for is so important. And remember, financial education is a journey, not a destination. Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of all time, 
spends 80% of his day reading. If it's good enough for him, it's good enough for us. Chapter 4. Future-proof your finances. Max out retirement savings. Moving on to retirement savings, it's like preparing for a long vacation that lasts, well, the rest of your life. Did you know that according to a recent survey, 64% of Americans aren't prepared for retirement? We need to change that. First, let's talk 401ks. If your employer offers a match, take it. It's free money. Not using it is like turning down a bonus. Who does that? And here's a tip. Try to contribute at least enough to get the full match. IRAs or individual retirement accounts are another great tool. There are two types, traditional and Roth. The difference, when you pay the taxes. With traditional, you pay when you take the money out. With Roth, you pay now, but withdraw tax-free later. It's like choosing between paying for a meal now or later. Both have their benefits. Compound interest works here too. The earlier you start, the more you'll have when you retire. It's like planting a tiny seed and watching it grow into a huge tree. And don't forget about catch-up contributions. If you're over 50, you can put in extra money. It's the government's way of saying, it's not too late to save for retirement. Retirement is not the end of the road. It is the beginning of the open highway, says a wise quote. So let's make sure that highway is smooth and well paved by saving wisely now. Chapter 5. Escape the debt trap. Say no to high interest. Now let's tackle a biggie. Debt, especially the high interest kind. You know, the kind that feels like a backpack full of rocks? Let's lighten that load. First off, credit cards. They're like double-edged swords. Handy but dangerous if not used right. The average credit card interest rate. It's around 16%. Ouch! If you're carrying a balance, that's like giving away extra money for nothing. Here's a strategy. The debt snowball method. Start by paying off your smallest debt first, while paying minimums on the others. Once that's gone, move to the next smallest. It's like a snowball rolling downhill getting bigger and faster. Before you know it, you're debt free. But what about those big debts like student loans? It's a tough one for sure. The key is to not ignore them. Look into repayment options. There are plans based on your income. And sometimes you might even qualify for loan forgiveness. It's like finding a secret passage in a maze. An important tip, avoid payday loans like the plague. They're like quicksand, easy to get into, hard to get out of. The interest rates can be as high as 400%. That's not just a rock in your backpack, it's a whole boulder. Debt is like any other trap. Easy enough to get into, but hard enough to get out of, says Henry Wheeler Shaw. Let's work on getting out and staying out. Chapter 6. Your Safety Net. Building an Emergency Fund. Lastly, we're building our safety net. The Emergency Fund. Life loves surprises, but not all of them are fun. Your car breaks down, you lose your job. Without a safety net, these can be disasters. How much should you save? A good rule of thumb is three to six months worth of living expenses. It sounds like a lot, but every little bit counts. Skip that extra coffee, pack your lunch. Small changes add up. Where to keep this fund? In a savings account where you can get to it easily. This isn't for investing, it's for quick access when you need it. Think of it as a financial fire extinguisher. There in case of emergencies. Starting an emergency fund can be as simple as setting aside $20 a week. In a year, that's over $1,000. Not too shabby, right? It's like building a fort brick by brick. Remember, an emergency fund isn't just about money. It's about peace of mind. Knowing you have a cushion can help you sleep better at night. As Dave Ramsey says, an emergency fund turns a crisis into an inconvenience.